Come on, Soda Pop. Let's go. There certainly have been uh, big days in the history of our great city. Game-changing days. Uh, history makers. Today is one of those days. After years and years of painstaking work spanning two mayors, two governors, two presidents, multiple senators, and a bevy of dedicated public servants, we can see the finish line on certainly one of the most challenging projects, but also one of the most important projects in, that Sioux Falls has ever tackled. Back in 2005, the citizens and taxpayers of the United States of America entrusted the citizens of Sioux Falls with an appropriation of hard-earned taxpayer dollars to the tune of $40 million. This investment was approved in the spirit of spurring on economic development within the confines of our city's history, uh, heartbeat, downtown Sioux Falls on a parcel of land owned by BNSF Railway Company. Today, I am proud to announce, on behalf of 175,000 citizens of Sioux Falls, along with our allies in this joint venture, that negotiations have been concluded with BNSF Railway Company for the purchase of their downtown rail yard. The city of Sioux Falls has agreed to purchase more than 10 acres of rail yards for $27,334,500, utilizing funds from the Federal Highway Bill. Uh, once again, the city of Sioux Falls has agreed to purchase more than 10 acres of rail yards for $27,334,500, utilizing funds from the Federal Highway Bill. BNSF has certainly been a great ally with the city through this negotiation process. There are so many people to thank uh, that certainly have been allies on, on this venture over the last 10 years, including, of course, BNSF Railway Company, the Federal Highway Administration, the state of South Dakota, especially the Department of Transportation, certainly with the support of the governors along the way, Senator Tim Johnson, and his office, Senator John Thune and his office, Ellison Eastern Railroad, the Sioux Falls Metropolitan Planning Organization, City of Sioux Falls staff members, of course the city councilors that have been with us along the journey, and so many others, and, and folks that's what you need to understand, there are so many others that uh, you know we just take so long to, to thank, but they truly made a difference in making today's announcement. A reality. But we want to provide you with a bunch more detail uh, on this uh, this history making, not only negotiation but also uh, agreement. And to kick us off, uh, I'd like Mark Cotter uh, to to help explain uh, some of that. Mark. Thank you, Mayor. Good morning, and thank you for coming. Uh, this has been a large complex project that spanned more than a decade. And for that, let me give you just a brief history of what's taken place. This rail yard has been a part of this community for 125 years. Good rail service is the backbone of any thriving city and certainly is the case still today. Discussion started back in the 1990s on the potential to relocate the rail yard and increase economic development opportunities in the downtown. In 2001, the paperwork started. So in 2001 and 2002, the feasibility and the conceptual phasing plans began to be wrote to look at the options for what it would take to relocate the rail yard. In 2005, based on these alternatives and these studies, Senator Thune and Senator Johnson were able to obtain $40 million in federal project funds to implement the downtown rail yard relocation plan. In 2006 through 2013, I think it's fair to say we conducted an exhaustive environmental assessment study to ultimately select the preferred alternative. The 
purpose and need in that study, is wrote, provide opportunities for economic development in the downtown, fulfill the legislative intent, and maintain acceptable rail yard operations. The environmental assessment looked at multiple options. In doing nothing from constructing major projects like a bridge over the falls, a new rail yard out by Great Bear, and many others in between. <coughs> Happy to say the selected alternative was for the city to buy the 10 acres of rail yard land, BNSF to construct a new connection for Ellis and Eastern uh, under the viaducts, and BNSF to build two 34 foot long siding tracks out by Great Bear and modify rail yard operations. 2014, the independent appraisal work was done. And, and just um, part of perspective, when you, when you spend federal dollars, you have to hire an expert appraiser and then you also have to hire another expert appraiser to review the first expert's work. And so this work has been uh, long and complex and, and taken many, many uh, points uh, to accomplish. Once those appraisals were done in the fall of 2014 through July of 2015, and, and literally uh, red lines were still being made on Monday on some of the uh, last agreements, uh, we conducted and, as the mayor said, concluded these complex negotiations on the purchase of this rail yard. Some funding in terms of the transactions. The original federal project funds of $40 million were established. As the mayor mentioned, the art purchase of $27,334,500 for the 10.25 acres. This purchase price is within the authorized project funds. This is the least expensive alternative of the environmental assessment um, outside of the no build option. And as a comparison, the cost of one of the alternatives that was in the environmental assessment was in excess of $50 million was rejected. The components of the purchase price are really three key components. Uh, raw land value, the construction cost for the two new siding tracks, and the connection track, and the replacement value of the yard that's being purchased. BNSF, by agreement, has up to two years to use the rail yard and construct the new assets. And we anticipate development to begin in 2018. The estimated federal remaining project funds are $7 million. The remaining federal funds can be used for other project costs that we anticipate to actually prepare this land for redevelopment, such as track removal, the removal of the crossings that you drive across today on 6th and 8th Street to physically remove those railroad ties and replace it with smooth concrete pavement. Uh, demolition of the freight building, there's a freight building inside the subject property purchase that will uh, be demolishing, uh, demolishing. And then construction of historic commemorative kiosks to really commemorate what this rail yard has been to the city for the last 125 years. We'll utilize some city funds as needed for either soil mitigation uh, and to construct a fence along the property to really separate the redevelopment land from the two active rail lines that will remain through our city. Next, Josh Peterson, our project manager, will take you through some additional details of the purchase and give you an overview of the timeline uh, moving forward. Josh. Thanks, Mark. Um, Mark's done a great job of uh, really summarizing kind of the high level uh, <coughs> where we're at with the project and the, and, and the, the details of the purchase agreement. This has been a, a very complex project um, with some complex negotiations, but with both sides reaching an agreement. Um, yeah, I, I just wanted to kind of go through, because it's been complex, there's some unique features in the purchase agreement. I just wanted to kind of highlight those uh, for, for you today. Um, one of the things uh, is uh, the, the mechanism for the purchase is is uh, the city is acquiring this by a quick plane deed, uh, which is a little different than what the average citizen would be familiar with when you're purchasing uh, a new home uh, for, for yourself. Uh, it, basically what it says is BNSF is selling us the interest in their, 
their interest in the property. And it's a typical me mechanism that the railroads use when they sell property that they no longer have to use. Um, because it's a little bit of a unique type mechanism, uh, the city has uh, been proactive. We've done a lot of title research on the property there, going back to when it was originally um, transferred from the uh, original property owners to the railroads. And we feel very comfortable with the, the title information we have that we can move forward with the project uh, and with the purchase. Um, we do anticipate needing to do a little bit of additional title work once we make the purchase on about a half acre of the 10 acres we are purchasing. Another unique feature of this uh, is that uh, BNSF is selling us the property in an as-is condition. Basically what you see today is what we are we are purchasing and we are taking the responsibility for the conditions there. And the thing I just wanted to highlight there is the city is taking the responsibility for any soil contamination on the site. Once again, knowing this unique situation, we've been proactive in doing some extensive soil testing on the site to get a good handle on what is there. And we really do feel like we've got a good idea of the conditions that uh, are there today. Uh, our testing has is, is, uh, found low levels of petroleum and lead in the site that uh, while contaminated are not hazardous to the public. And we feel comfortable knowing those conditions that we can move forward with the purchase. Uh, we've worked with the state DNR you know, to develop a plan so that we can move forward and, uh, and uh, have the property uh, ready for redevelopment <clears throat> in the future. Mark touched on this a bit, but another unique uh, part of this purchase is that the city is committed to build a security fence between the property line of the property we're purchasing and the, the railroad's property that they're maintaining as an active rail site. Uh, they, to maintain their operations, they need to can operate on at least two main, main rail lines to connect their services in Sioux Falls and the surrounding area. And the security fence, we feel, is a mutual benefit to both of us. We want to have a uh, separation between redevelopment where we're going to see pedestrians and, and citizens occupying, we don't want them to inadvertently walk into a active rail site uh, where there's potential for injury. Um, you know, safety is a primary concern for us and we really do feel this is a benefit to us. And, and finally, the last thing I just wanted to highlight um, is that as part of the purchase, the city's agreed to put a, a noise easement on the property. And, and what this means is it's just we want to make sure we have full disclosure to any future property owners that there is an active rail site adjacent to this property and that they're fully aware of that and they understand that they should plan accordingly and uh, plan their development to be compatible with that adjacent land use. So with all those things and, and what Mark described, you know, the city team, we've, we've done a lot of work on this, uh, a lot of research in the past and what we're doing, we're going to need to do moving forward. And we really do feel this is a great agreement for the city and the project team does recommend us moving forward with it. Um, so with that, I, I do want to kind of um, summarize that you know, this is a really great milestone, a, a really great accomplishment for us, but our work isn't done. So I want to talk a little bit about the steps going forward and some of the things we're going to have to do over the next few years before the property is, uh, is uh, transferred to developers for future redevelopment. While we're describing the purchase agreement, and like Mark said, we literally have uh, finalized the redlining here yesterday. Um, we will be publishing that purchase and sale agreement on the city's website for the council agenda next week where the, where the public will be able to look at that and download it for their, their own review. We are anticipating to go in front of the city council on August 4th for their review and approval uh, of the purchase agreement. And uh, it would, if they approve it on that date, uh, it would be available for the mayor's signature on August 28th and executing 
the purchase agreement. With that, then we're ready to move into the actual closing on the property where the city makes the, cuts the, the check and then makes the purchase. One of the steps as part of the closing um, is uh, concerns BNSF and Ellison Eastern. Ellison Eastern does have some, uh, a right on a portion of the property, a first right of refusal to purchase it. BNSF and Ellison Eastern have been in negotiations to release that right and as part of our purchase agreement, um, that needs to be obtained before we close on the property. They have uh, been in communications, um, and uh, we expect that to happen prior to the close. Uh, we expect the, the closing on the property to be within eight months of uh, the execution of the purchase agreement. And then we would move into the, the phase where BNSF starts their construction on their new trackage. And as Mark said, they've got up to two years to, to perform that work or they'll be occupying the rail yard to continue their operations until that construction is completed. Uh, during those two years, uh, the city team does not expect to be idle. We have things that we'll be working on uh, to keep the project moving forward. Uh, we'll be working on any title work we need to do to make sure the title is marketable on the property, to turn it over to developers, uh, the historic mitigation, the signing, and uh, getting a, an official record of that existing rail yard. Um, so we're, we're uh, monumenting it for, uh, for the future generations to know what the rail yard meant to the city and, and what role it's played for the last 125 years. And we do expect to start the marketing of that sale within those two years, um, with I think more details to come as we get closer to that. Once those two years up and BNSF has uh, vacated their property, then the city will prepare that site for redevelopment. We'll be removing the existing tracks through there. Uh, we've got that warehouse building between 6th and 8th Street we need to demolish. Uh, we'll be removing the, the rail crossings in 6th and 8th Street and repaving that. And then we will be mitigating the top six inches of contaminated soil um, just to assist in making that property more desirable for redevelopment. With that, we expect uh, redevelopment to actually start taking place uh, in 2018. So with that, I'll turn it back to the mayor for some final closing comments. Thank you. I think uh, one of the things that, uh, that you'll find with this project, and, and I've said it uh, before and, and I'm going to say it again, uh, it's certainly one of the most convoluted, one of the most challenging projects that, that uh, I certainly have had, ever had the opportunity to, to, to work with, uh, but also uh, probably will go down as uh, the most rewarding project also um, uh, team that I've had the opportunity to, to engage in. Uh, you cannot imagine the amount of work, uh, the amount of pain, uh, the amount of uh, um, effort that went into this by, by so many folks and I know that there were many uh, that felt that uh, this was never going to get done. Um, uh, rather than giving up, uh, folks actually rallied together uh, to, to ultimately get this thing done. Uh, one of the things that we heard time and time and time again uh, is that there is no way, absolutely no way, that you will live within the confines of the $40 million mark. <coughs> but we did. We did. Uh, just want to give you some perspective. Uh, again, this uh, earmark was presented uh, to, to the citizens of Sioux Falls back in 2005. I just want to give you a little perspective. Uh, the, the amount that we've relayed today, the $27,334,500, if we equated that back into $2,005, it would be $22,370,401. I think that gives you just some unique perspective. Uh, you know, I, I know there's still going to be people that are going to challenge us uh, in terms of is this a worthy investment for America to make in the city of Sioux Falls. Uh, back then, uh, the taxpayers of America felt that $40 million was appropriate. And uh, I want to let the people of America know uh, 
that the purchase agreement uh, that we're working on now with the uh, BNSF Railway Company, uh, if we were to go back into 2005, I would say, people of America, uh, you allocated 40 million to us. Uh, we're going to try to make it happen for around 22 million 370,401 dollars in today's dollars. Uh, certainly, there have been other expenses along this journey. Certainly, uh, there have been challenges along this journey. Certainly, there have been maybe some mistakes made along this journey. But one thing that I can assure you is that there were a few folks who never gave up who stayed positive, who stayed productive, who overcame the naysayers, who overcame the critics, who overcame those who said this would never be done. Uh, for that, uh, we, should, we should celebrate. Uh, again, I, I do want to recognize uh, Senator John Thune and his team, Senator Tim Johnson and his team. Certainly, uh, the governors along the journey in the, uh, the state of South Dakota Federal Highway, oh my goodness, you can't imagine the amount of work uh, that we did with Federal Highway along with those uh, folks that, that care about the environment uh, and, and so many others, uh, including the NSF Railway Company. Um, we do want to open it up for questions to the press. Uh, certainly there's going to be a lot of questions today and we would expect more in the future. I also want to recognize Diane Best. Um, uh, I know that uh, there's many times where we may challenge people that are in the legal profession, uh, but boy, I, they, they do make a, make a difference. And on behalf of the city of Sioux Falls, uh, Diane Best and our legal team certainly made an incredible difference. Uh, so Diane, thank you and, and your team. But uh, again, uh, thank you for being here today. Uh, would, would anybody within the press have any questions at all for any of us, we'd we'll be happy to answer them. Mayor, it looks like that depot is not part of the uh, property. That will remain. Very good, Josh. Yes, that's that's uh, one of the, the ways we were able to move forward with this um, preferred alternative, where we would not need to construct a full new switch yard to replace what we're uh, what we were removing. Um, by them. By BNSF keeping the depot building as a place for their crews and their management to report to and, uh, and for their switching operations to report to, they're able to perform the limited switching they need on the tracks that are being remained. The, the, the siding tracks that are going out along Rice Street are not intended to be a full switch yard. That is a place for car storage and the transfer of cars between BNSF and Allison Eastern. So the depot building will be maintained by BNSF, and they do intend at this time uh, to maintain it as it is. Joe, you need a question, sir. Yeah, uh, first, congratulations. Thank you, Joe. Yeah. Uh, the environmental study, you guys said you have kind of a handle on what it's going to take, and that'll be paid for with city dollars. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about that, what it might take to get it ready for development? Good question. Sure. Um, as we uh, went through the environmental process, as I said, we, we did extensive soil testing out there. Um, we did, I think, over 20 soil borings on the site where we drilled and took samples um, through various layers, and we went from the surface all the way down to the bedrock there, so we know exactly. We, we tested everything as far as the soil on the site, and for a rail operation that's been in service for 125 years, it was surprising how little contamination was on the site. Um, we were very pleasantly surprised, I'll say, that it was as minor as we anticipated. Um, what we found was the majority of the soil that contamination was towards the surface. It, it hadn't penetrated deep. So as, one, as we work with the state DNR to figure out well, what, what do we need to do to make it redevelopable, we said, you know, what if we take off the top six inches of the soil and, and dispose of that properly and replace it with some clean topsoil? That will take care of the majority of the issues that are there. There's still some contamination below. Um, 
by cleaning the surface, we'll, we'll have it prepared for the bare minimum of redevelopment for parking lots. Um, what we want, because we don't know exactly what redevelopment is going to occur there, we didn't want to go any further with that with, with the city dollars. So what we're doing moving forward is we will, we will put an overlay district, a zoning overlay district on the property, basically informing property owners that as part of your development of the property, you'll be responsible to hire a, an environmental consultant to prepare a plan for the development that is going to actually occur on the property. So we wanted to make sure we were, we, were, we had it prepared for the bare minimum and then, you know, let the developers plan accordingly for their own redevelopment plans. So the city anticipates selling uh, this once it's prepared to private developers? Yes. Joe, if I could, maybe to add just a, I don't know, a little levity, but also at the same time, just to show you how convoluted uh, this project has been. Talk about the environment, and maybe Diane can do it better. Uh, but just want to give you a little flavor of Sioux Falls. Um, uh, we actually have to really focus on a long-eared bat uh, uh, as well. Uh, and again, this is a federal, this is a, we are utilizing federal funds. And so when you do that, uh, you do have to jump through a, a number of hoops in order to utilize those federal funds. Well, one of the hoops that we have to navigate through, that we're still not done, is dealing with a long-eared bat uh, potential. And uh, those are things that are within the confines of this uh, uh, you know, unbelievable uh, contract or negotiation process. And, and uh, so when we're dealing with the environment, Joe, we're dealing with things like, yes, uh, petroleum or maybe some, some chemicals within the confines of, of the yard, uh, but also uh, we're going to be looking for a long year bath as, as well. Is that appropriate, Diane? That's right. Okay. <laughs> Could you clarify the numbers for me? I may have written it down wrong, but I have um, more than $23 million for the actual purchase, and then I have $7 million left for other projects, but I'm missing $10 million somewhere in there. Could you just break that $40 million into the federal? Funding down Certainly, and those um, we'll be able to refine more of that uh, in the months going forward. But essentially, when you get a congressional ad uh, for a project, uh, there's typically an obligation limit that gets calculated each year. You don't necessarily get the entire 40 million um, because it's in, it's based on anticipated revenues. Um, and so, what we've been what we've been communicating for probably the last two, two and a half years is that there's been approximately $34.8 million uh, available. As the mayor said, we have spent some dollars. We've been working on the exhaustive environmental assessment and the detailed appraisals. Those cost, uh, those, those cost pro part of the project funds. But essentially when you, when you um, start from that, say 34 to uh, 34.8 million, and you take off the purchase price of the 27.3 million, uh, there's approximately $7 million left uh, for really what will happen next um, after, after BNSF constructs the new assets, we can remove the tracks, um, uh, we can uh, ultimately address some of those uh, remediation steps that we need to do in 6th and 8th Street. Um, really anything that qualifies for the for the federal fund process, um, we'll, we'll be tapping into that remaining seven million. Okay. Thank you. Keely, too. Uh, again, forty million down to the thirty-four point eight, and and that five point two was uh, ten years worth of prep work um, and lessons learned, and then uh, thirty-four point eight minus the the twenty-seven plus, you got the remainder funds. And as Mark said, folks, we're going to try to utilize. Those federal funds uh, will be frugal, uh, will be prudent, will be responsible, but we are going to follow the rules of engagement and still try to utilize that, that $7 million that, that remains. Uh, but I also should be open and transparent to the people of Sioux Falls, too, uh, and uh, certainly the city council as well. Uh, there is a potential, there is some potential that we'll have to util utilize city funds as well along this journey. Um, and uh, so we'll certainly keep you up to date on that, uh, make you cognizant of that uh, as well. 
What do you Trump. envision, Mayor, downtown? I mean, skyscrapers, lofts, or we can look Well, it, it, I want to be careful, Joe, because we all dream differently. Uh, yeah, I know we've got some developers in the room. We've got some folks from downtown St. Falls that are just chopping up a bit and, and, and excited about this. Uh, we've got city planners in the room. We've got people from the state in the room. And certainly you've got some city folks uh, with city government there too. And, and yes, a, a mayor that likes to dream big every, every now and then. Um, I, I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be fairly simple. Uh, I do want us to dream big. Uh, I want us to maximize the opportunities. Uh, I want us to, to really uh, heed that the United States of America gave us 40 million bucks to really spur on economic development in the heart of our, in the heart of our city. And so we should, we should be, be prudent with it. Uh, get the biggest bang for the taxpayer buck that we can. And, uh, uh, and, and I have every, um, uh, every thought in the world that we're gonna make that, we're gonna make that happen. Um, now, I, I do struggle when I hear, well, let's just build a parking ramp on that land. Uh, I, I, I struggle with that, because uh, I, I think we can dream bigger, dream bigger. I, if I had a personal thought, uh, and this is just my own personal thought, okay? Uh, I've traveled the world, I've, I've been very blessed uh, by that, and, and I've seen these, uh, these city squares uh, across the world uh, that really are just, uh, uh, show places for, for a particular city. And uh, if, if I had my own dream, my own personal dream, it would be, you know, to, to combine uh, business, combine housing, combine uh, places to, 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 to play, uh, and, and, and all these wonderful things in, in a city square, uh, right in the heart of our downtown. Uh, and I think we can combine it all to, to really get a big bang for our buck, Joe. Uh, and, but, but again, there's so many dreams out there, and, and I think the reality today is, is that again, we are so close to the finish line to actually taking this, uh, this 10 acres of land and really doing something wonderful for it. Uh, you know, I, 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 we gathered the team last night, and I tried to help them understand that uh, I truly do believe this is one of the biggest announcements in our, in our city's history. I, I truly do. Uh, it's bigger than the event center, folks. This is. This is bigger than the event center by, by far. Because what's going to happen is that 100 years from now, 200 years from now, this is going to be something that, that we're, we're still going to see. Uh, I, I don't know what it's going to be, Joe. But 200 years from now, this 10 acres of land uh, is, is going to be something that would never have occurred unless this negotiation process, this deal with, uh, uh, with BNSF Railway Company would, 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 would not have occurred. And, but but I, I think it's going to. And uh, for that, it's a, it's a big deal. So um, um, Joe, uh, we're just, let's just keep dreaming big and make good things happen. And I, and I know, I know we'll do it right. And we need to. I mean, uh, the, the taxpayers of America, they entrusted us with 40 million bucks. And uh, we don't take that for granted in Sioux Falls and in South Dakota. Uh, we don't. Uh, the, the governor doesn't. This mayor doesn't. Our council doesn't. The citizens don't. We are frugal. We are prudent. We are responsible. We are cautious. Um, we're going to utilize these $40 million, and we believe that we have in, in, a, in a very effective way. And uh, I'm just really excited about it. Uh, others? You're speaking very closely to it, but uh, regular people going about their days today, Tell us how their lives are impacted by this, or what do you explain? What do you say when somebody says, "Well, what is, how does this affect me?" Just giving a little perspective. I mean, if, if you look at uh, downtown Sioux Falls, just even over the last five and a half years, uh, just how it's not only been a, a place to live, I'm sorry, a place to work. It's it's transformed itself into this magnificent place to play and a magnificent place to to, to live. Uh, and, and it has become a, a real show place for our community, uh, a real quality of life investment, economic development generator, and, and so much more. So for the people of Sioux Falls, I'd say this is just another grand potential investment in the heartbeat of our city. Uh, and Keely, when, when our heart is pumping, 
uh, and it's pumping strong, then the potential for the rest of the city, for the rest of our body, uh, is, is that much greater. And so that's why I think this is just a, such a monumental day for, for Sioux Falls. I don't want to close this. Uh, actually, uh, Josh, come here. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I had the opportunity to, uh, to engage uh, Mark and Josh in my office right before we came in here. And uh, how we, we just talked about uh, how, you know, during the, the times over this 10 years, and I've only been through it for five and a half. Uh, but, to, but Josh and, and Mark and, and, and so many others have been with uh, this beast of a battle for the longest time. And, and so, uh, people of Sioux Falls, I want to introduce you to uh, Josh Peterson, uh, just one of the, uh, the stewards, one of the public servants, one of the, uh, uh, the people that were actually in the arena to make this happen for all of you. Uh, so Josh, uh, if you wouldn't mind, Close out the conference for us, please. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, I've had the opportunity to work on this for, for over six years and have given a number of presentations to, to different groups within the community and within the surrounding community. Um, and as, as you talk about the impact to the public, one of the things I like I say, is we're here talking today about the the rail yard redevelopment and the what we're spending the the federal funds around. But as you go back to 2001 and 2002, when we first did the feasibility studies, that's when we generated a master plan for not only this project but for multiple projects with within Sioux Falls dealing with the railroad. That master plan helped us with. Phillips to the Falls project, Uptown at Falls Park, uh, Falls Park West, uh, 57th Street and 69th Street overpasses to help traffic on the south side of town flowing east and west, uh, future overpass at maybe 26th Street and, and southeastern. So and as you look at the larger rail master plan, there are very few people in the community that aren't impacted by this. So, you know, I. I'm, I'm just really proud to have been a part of the project and really excited to see it moving forward and to see some redevelopment downtown.
those two things that you just read this about, uh, it's just like reacting to this and the citizens and the citizens and the brand and others, and they've all got small opinions too. So, but ultimately, if you're going to be effective in government, you have to learn to just kind of stay in your own ball and stay focused. We talked a few years ago, we talked a few years ago, I mean, this is one of the biggies that just hit this one to be checked off. I mean, obviously, the movie was important. You get the exposure to tell me. You get the transcripts. 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 This one though is Uh, 
Uh, and so it was a yeah. combination. Yeah. <laughs> private plane up there. Well, yeah. We did. We took a, we took a private plane. Yeah. Uh, we got up there and uh, we sat in a room about the size of this. And, uh, and we just kind of had a, a real heart to heart. I'm a G. Well, I was a little bit too big that one. But I uh, uh, was part of the party, so. Yeah. So, thank you. Well, I mean, for the last thing, though, was that, were there doubts before that? You know, I was going to ask oh, you, yeah. were there, there serious doubts like, hey, is this thing ever going to be done? I think in anything that you do, there, doubt does creep in every now and then. Oh, is this one of them? Yeah. Oh, I think our style is different. It's broad and the gospel is as well as anybody. Um, probably those deepest, darkest uh, times where, where the, most of the doubt creeped in. Uh, that's kind of where we really got a little mad uh, and say, dang it. Uh, we are going to get this done. Let's, 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 exactly, let's, let's, let's go again. Let's, let's try something else. And, uh, I think that if anybody has figured out my style by now, uh, and, uh, <laughs> poor Josh, I'm so sorry. But my style is right when somebody tells me that something can be done, that's exactly uh, that's what I need to hear. Uh, because then uh, I, I want to prove the nation and uh, the law more and more. And, uh, and, uh, but that was that was the turning point. I think it was. I think it was uh, easily the, the turning point in in, uh, in the one day meeting. Basically, it was one day. Yeah, one day. Yeah, it was a bit of fly on the wall. Oh, oh my gosh! Yeah. Yeah. Media not as well. No. <laughs> Mayor, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Sure. Yeah. Uh, Come on, Soda Pop, let's go. Come on, let's go. Come on.